example, let us look at the liver. This is a diagram of the liver, and we'll look at what is happening in the blood before it goes into the liver, and what happens, what the blood is like after it passes through the liver. So first, glucose. Glucose is in your blood, and when that glucose passes through the liver, the blood glucose level is adjusted. If there's too much glucose inside your body, that glucose is now converted to a storage, to a storage substance called glycogen. After the blood leaves the liver, the cells can now use what's left. The glucose that um, passes through here, get the arrow, the glucose that passes through that is not converted to glycogen leaves the liver and it's now used by the cells for respiration and, you know, to give the cell energy. And let us look at amino acids in the blood. So blood before it goes into the liver has amino acids in it. And once it gets inside the liver, some of these amino acids are used to make proteins, proteins that are um, in the blood, in the plasma area of the blood, and any extra amino acids are broken down into glucose and urea. So there we have some more glucose available, and we also now have urea. So the glucose, let's take the arrow from the glucose. The glucose is used by the cells, and the urea produced after it leaves the liver goes towards the kidneys because urea is a waste product. And you'll learn coming up how the kidney gets rid of this waste product urea. Just know for now that once the amino acids in the blood goes into the liver. Some are used to make proteins and extra the extra amino acids are broken down into glucose and urea. The glucose is used by the cells and the urea is sent to the kidneys to get rid of, to be gotten rid of. Okay, now what about those not so good things if you like coffee a lot, like caffeine and drugs? and um, hormones. Well, everything we take into our bodies is not always the best. Sometimes um, we take in things like, for example, the caffeine, and the liver has to deal with that. The hormones, they are inactivated. The drugs are detoxified. The caffeine and the drugs, they are detoxified, and the hormones are inactivated inside the liver. Any waste would go to the kidneys. You know, the blood also has vitamins and minerals in it. And those vitamins and minerals, once they make it into the liver, they are stored there. The liver stores vitamins A and D and also iron. Remember, the blood is made up of red blood cells and also white blood cells. But the red blood cells, they only um, live for a certain time period. So the old red blood cells, as it passes through the blood into the liver, they are destroyed. They are destroyed and eventually released as waste into the gallbladder. So imagine what would happen if you didn't have a proper functioning liver. If you didn't have a proper functioning liver, all of this right here would not take place. And the blood in would be the same as the blood out. You don't want a buildup of urea and drugs, caffeine, even hormones and old red blood cells. You don't want waste products building up inside your blood. It can poison your body. So we need to make sure we have a proper functioning liver so that it can filter out our blood so that we can now have usable substances 
and also waste substances so we can get rid of it. Now, when all of this is happening, this is what we this is metabolism. You learned about metabolism and you learned that in the process of metabolism, heat is produced. So the liver is a very active area and when all of this is happening, lots and lots of heat is being produced. And that heat is used to warm your body. The heat is carried through the blood and the blood carries that heat all throughout your body. 